I'm Ernie Johnson here again with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. This NBA season rocking right along, and we're loving every minute of it. Tonight, we'll be watching the Milwaukee Bucks playing against the Los Angeles Clippers. Checking out the Clippers, this is their first time facing off this season. Last year, they split the season series at a game apiece. And as we reach the midway point, Kenny, still a lot of games left on the schedule. How do players cope with the wear and tear their bodies go through? Well, a lot of times when you're mentally or physically tired, you know, you could sit there and all of a sudden you misquote things, you missay things here on the analyst desk. On a basketball court, you, that's turnovers. That's missing assignments, missing rebounds. Same thing. Like I know, this is our, what, 82nd game this year? You're starting to feel a little bit. That's how those guys feel. I didn't know the midpoint was the 82nd game. But anyway, injuries start to take a toll. No, but we've done 87 second two games. Doesn't mean yeah, the teams. we've done a lot we've of games in our role here in the right. I the misunderstood two the, games a night. Remember on the set. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was saying the injuries they start to take a toll. Not just the big ones, the little ones. Type of injuries I hate are the freak injuries. One time, Ernie, I was walking with my shoes off, stubbed my that's, toe. That's called barefoot. That's a freak injury. Stubbed my toe. Was out for six weeks. So you got to get rest, eat well. Well, if you kick ice a brick wall, that's not a and man up. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should. Uh, here's Kevin Harlan. Barefoot. We have an interconference affair lined up for you today as the Los Angeles Clippers come in for this one. It's Wednesday Night Basketball, live on 2K Sports. I'm Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony and Doris Burke reporting from the sidelines. We look at the Bucks. On paper, you'd Ready. give them the edge, but of course, they're not taking anything for granted. They'll look to come out strong and prove they're the better team. And I think for Milwaukee, they're a team searching for a way to take a leap forward this season. So far, here in the early going, that leap has not existed. Well, with the personnel they have, Greg, that leap probably not going to come. I mean, they could be a playoff team, but I don't see them being a major threat. And the Clippers starting five. Edgy Jackson out there with Williams. Then there's Kawhi Leonard. 
Then it's Paul George, and it's Noah in at the five down low. Now here's Jackson coming off a solid outing against Minnesota. Back to George. Just four to shoot. And the basket good. A bank shot that time. Just such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. Bucks are a strong team last year at home to start the year, certainly. The whole league was marveling at their start. Much improved, Greg, from the season before, but fell off, Greg, a, a, a touch late in the season. And Kevin, credit Jason Kidd. I mean, he got this team off to that great start, particularly at home, and they built some confidence, and that helped propel them into the playoffs. Sad to say they were still near the bottom of the league, though, in attendance. Here's Jackson following the basket by Chris Middleton. Outside, George goes up on the wing, gets the front of the rim and out. Yeah, the Bucks ended the guys with a 23 and 18 record at home. Really impressive for a young team. They didn't have the largest margin of victory because they won a lot of close games here at the Bradley Center. I tell you what, guys, it's going to be a tough day on this defense if he's got the A game rolling tonight. Noah the screen, and George kicks it to Noah. Leonard attacking as Brook Lopez with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, clearly he had an established position there. Yeah, and, and I, I like this call because you want the refs in that situation. If there's any doubt, err on the side of giving the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. That should have been a block, and it was. Outside Jackson. Leonard against Undercumbo. From past the arc. Leonard no luck. And one thing that made the Bucks so strong at home was their three-pointers. They're the top in three-point percentage here at home. And, and easy to get the crowd into it when you knock a couple down from deep. No good. Ledzo with an defensive effort. Oh, that's terrific defense there. That's how you protect the rim. How about that? Breaking out the Statue of Liberty from that dunk. A nice way to pad that lead a little more. Yes, indeed. Now here's Jackson. And he can be counted on to put some points on the board every night. He's averaging right around 13 and a half points a game. George against Middleton. And George kicks to Leonard. The good-looking shot from the wing. And Milwaukee has possession. They're moving on after the tough loss they took at the hands of the Blazers. And if there's one aspect of the game that really stood out for me, it was the rebounding. Basketball is about possessions, and we saw a noticeable difference in terms of the effort both teams were putting forth. Simply got outworked under the boards, guys. I mean, that's the that's the no-brainer of the deal. I mean, they got pushed around all game long. And, and still, I, I don't know that anyone can define what Giannis's position is. It, it's kind of still up in the air. I mean, he's played mostly on the wing a season ago, and, and thus far, maybe that could end up being the best fit. free throw missing prior to last season Giannis was experimenting with a point guard position for stretches during the summer league well you know Kevin he's just the type of guy whose size and length really allow him to guard every position true and he's good on the second and, you know, you hear everybody talking about Giannis's potential. I mean, look at the athleticism coupled with his measurables. I mean, that is just off the chart. Milwaukee leading by five. What's the left side? Picks it down to Middleton. They get a hand on it. Lock at six. And it's under the Kumbo penetrated. Here's O'Brien. He gets hauled in by Los Angeles. 
for Giannis, it's not just his physique and length. Uh, Clark, he moves insanely well for a guy that size. Yeah, Giannis also might not be done growing, Kevin. Right. How scary is that? I mean, you know, he could be a legit seven-foot shooting guard when it's all said and done. That would be something to see. Mm. Nice work on the inside. Hard to get that one up and over the big fella. Well, it's not supposed to be easy down there, and a little artistry on the inside helped him make it happen. Here's O'Brien taking a look at his stance. He's averaging around seven and a half points a game. That is good. Clippers trail by five. Earlier, Doris Burke spoke with head coach Jason Kidd. What did you find out, Doris? Kevin, he knows they're facing a team that has explosive finishers and can swing momentum in their favor with huge dunks. Because of this, he said, they're going to try to turn this team into a jump shooting team by collapsing on defense. Good strategy, Kevin. All right, Doris, thank you very much. Now here's Middleton. Paul George unable to get his shot to go. Lenzo passes to Lopez. Outside, out of the Kumbo. It's rebounded by Leonard. And, and trying to come up with the highlight reel finish, somebody forgot to finish it. That's the kind of D you need when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were all over. Now here's Middleton. He has six. Back to Bledsoe. Lopez a screen. Just five to shoot. Out of the Kumbo. Can't get that one to fall. You know, he's been off his game this quarter just a bit. Hasn't been able to get a whole lot to go so far. Jackson dishes to Noah. Williams attacking. The shot no good. Good D by Lopez. Bucks leading by five. What's her with it? He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. Passes to Lopez. Here's Honda Takumbo, and the dunk to finish it off. Uh, beauty. Boy, he threw out some punishment with that two-hand throw down. And Clark, now's the time to do it. Continue to attack that rim. And, and boy, how good was Chris Middleton last season? I mean, always a deep shooter who could stretch the floor. He hits the weight room in the offseason and became a much stronger defender. Now, he's one of the more promising 3 and D guys in the league. Matthews, he's checked in for the Bucks. Clippers trail by seven. Jackson kicks to George. Noah with a screen for George. And it's sent back by Lopez. Right side out of the Kumbo. Wide open look. And he gets it to go. On the Takumbo, has got seven points in the game. And for Chris Middleton last season, he went up in points, assists, rebounds, but went down in turnovers. Boy, what an improvement for this young man. A late bloomer. I liked him when he was at Texas A&M, still growing into his body, playing with great confidence, and he can spray that thing from three. I like his promise. Clock at four. Here's Williams. Los Angeles with another miss. And boy, has he been struggling big time here in the quarter. Yeah, he's played tight. I mean, you can see it. No flow at all to his game right now. And that's the Kumbo gets it to go. And it's taken them no time to build this lead up. Great first quarter offensively. But no time to relax here. They've got to keep the pressure on with the defense. And I think they've got to try to put this one away early. Now here's Jackson. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. It's Noah with the drive. And last year, not exactly up to Noah's lofty standards. It was way down in field goal percentage and free throw percentages uh, compared to the season before, but he did not play completely healthy all of last year either. A little dinged up, missed 13 games more than he had the season prior, and, and also the minutes dropped as well. And you could just see him laboring at times on the floor, clearly affected by those injuries. And that one falls for Noah. A different look for Milwaukee. Robin Lopez is checked in for Lopez. Corver comes in for Johnny O'Brien. And George Hills subbed in for Eric Bledsoe. The Clippers also making some changes. Sanders checked in for Paul George. Smith comes in for Leonard. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Williams. That 
one is no good. Tell you what, they haven't wasted any time getting into the swing of things on the board. And even this early, that's a good omen for the rest of the game. Hill has the open look, and it's off the back rim. No good. Two on one as they jump out on the break. On the wing, Jackson. He's covered by Matthews. The dish to Smith. Rebound, Milwaukee. And, you know, going back to Noah last season, I think the additions to the Bulls' front court had an effect on him. I mean, they added the Saul and Miritich, two major talents up front. I think that gave Noah less opportunities than he had the year before, and it was an adjustment for him. And guys, talking about Joe Kim Noah, he was still the spirit of that team last season. Amongst all the great talents the Bulls had, Noah was that energizer and catalyst for the team, a true warrior, even in an off year. And that one misses. And when you watch Wes Matthews, you see he's just a fantastic perimeter defender, Clark. He can match up well at either the two or the three. His combination, Kevin, of length and strength and lateral movement make him an outstanding defensive player. And the Clippers making a change here. Morris has checked in. And the second free throw, good. And for Matthews, you know, he knows that he's a strong defender. And so last year, his claim was that he was the best two-way shooting guard in the NBA. Now here's Jackson looking for his first basket still in this one. And Sanders, here we go. And a moment now to see nice three-point percentage numbers on this list. A look at the leaderboard showing us the most accurate three-point shooting two men in the league. Number one, Chris Middleton. Second is Wesley Matthews. These guys are gunners. I mean, they've got the green light at all times because of their three-point shooting. I mean, they are cash money. Well, when they're shooting the percentages they shoot, I mean, you never want to see these guys passing up an open look from beyond the arc. I mean, they're firmly in the let it fly zone. All systems go with them. The first one falls. And he makes the first, but misses the second. You know, a team's rebounding is one of the great measures of its energy, and theirs has been terrific in the first quarter. Yeah, they brought it in terms of having another level of intensity right from the tip. On a combo, a screen on Jackson. Hill, no good. Clippers trail by 10 to the middle. Offensive rebound. Morris gets to Beverly. Sanders sets the screen for Beverly. The pass to Jackson. Takes the three. Rebounded by the Bucks. This, their first look at this year's Los Angeles squad. And, and this is the first of two games between the two, East versus West, so they don't see a whole lot of one another. Yeah, and Greg, for me, that just raises the intrigue level. Some matchups we don't get to see that often, so I'll be watching this one closely. And here's Corver. Josh Smith getting his three to go. And Matthews kicks to Corver. And they wasted no time getting those three points back. And a huge lead here early to start. Well, you know, right from the tip, there's not anything they haven't done well so far. Jackson passes to Smith. Screened by Sanders. Morris gets to Beverly. Out to Morris. Takes a three. That's good. Back at you. I mean, they immediately get those three points back. Trading spray guns from long range. Trading blows from behind the arc. And, and Coach Doc Rivers wears multiple hats for this organization. Not only is he the head coach, but also in charge of all basketball operations. Really the leader in a lot of ways for this team.
Here is Hill. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Pass to Corver. It's Hill on the wing. Corver a screen on Beverly. On the wing, Corver. And it's off from three-point range. Clippers trail by seven. The drive by Jackson. An amazing finish with a hand right in his face. Milwaukee's gone just one of four from three-point range here in the first. Beverly against Hill. Here's Lopez. And again, the Bucks miss. Awesome defense. I mean, he'll hit those unless you're right in his grill. Beverly wide open. Misses the three. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Pass to Matthew. 52 seconds left in the first quarter. The three from Hill can't hit. And the Clippers will come the other way. They're coming off that win against Minnesota. And believe it or not, it wasn't the stars that led the charge for them in that win. It, it was about the role play. I mean, the guys who they don't usually count on for the lion's share of their points came through. Guys, yeah, simply a complete team performance. And road wins where everybody contributes really can galvanize a team and bring it together. Now, here is Hill. After the miss from Reggie Jackson, six-second difference between the shot and game play. There's the pick. Corver. Better job of fighting over those screens. And Greg, especially when the ball is in his hands. I mean, come on now. You know he doesn't miss too many open looks like that. Screen by Smith. In the corner, it's Morris. Releases. Gets to the corner and buries it. Morris has got five points so far. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Bucks ahead, leading by six. And the second quarter about to get started. We'll be back in just a moment. And before the game, Star Center Joe Keen Noah talked about the intensity of this Chicago Bulls team. I think Joe Keem can certainly make a case for Clark for Chicago being that famished five, especially with Rose back on the court. There's no doubt in that, Kevin. I mean, even the addition of Gasol with his two rings, the way he left things in L.A., that left him with an appetite that has him still hustling. Now the second quarter getting ready to start up. And for the Bucks guys, what jumps out to you, stats-wise? I just don't know that you're going to see a better quarter defensively than what we saw in the first. Really a big part of why they're on top here. The defense has been on point. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. Setting the floor for the Clippers. Kawhi Leonard is out there with Paul George. Then there's Noah. Then it's Patrick Beverly. And it's Williams at the shooting guard. Here's Beverly following the basket by Brooke Lopez. This is to George. Launches a three. That one drops, and he's now two for five. Boy, that was a rugged screen set there, fellas, and the defense didn't even try to go through that. And what so? Here we go. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. George has got three rebounds now in this one. Leonard, that's for two. Once so with the rebound. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that. Well, you, you, you know that Kawhi Leonard has an incredible reach with his arms, but even his hands are just massive measure. At 10 inches long and 11 inches wide. Wow. How about the screen that frees him up, though, for the jumper? We're closing in on two minutes played here in the second quarter. George dishes to Williams. Over in the corner, Beverly. Here's the three. Rebound, Milwaukee. They've led by as many as 11 points. Well, to give some perspective on Leonard's hand size that Greg was talking about, Clark, those measurements, 11 by 10, are what you typically would do. Oh! 
was sort of surprising he goes for a slam that difficult while they're trailing. Yeah, but still, you know what? A magnificent move for the ring. I tell you Agreed. what, guys, I don't care what the score is. That's the play we're going to remember when this game is over. And Beverly kicks to Leonard. Lopez with the steal. Feeds it to Corver. This is it to O'Brien. Bloodsoe outside. Stolen by Noah. And here we go. Fast break. Beverly's got it. And the shot is good. The Bucks lead has been cut now. Now it's just three on the bucket from Williams. Great anticipation and awareness to come up with the steal and trigger the fast break. And now just a one possession game thanks to that quick hitter. Outstanding play in the open court. O'Brien kicks to Bloodsoe. Lopez a screen. Here's Middleton. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. Good pick, but he, he just couldn't make it count. Yeah, nice job of setting the screen by his teammate there. And I'm sure you appreciate it. Leonard against Corver to the wing right side. Let's the free fly. That's good from Williams on the assist by Beverly. Williams has got the game tied up here for the Clippers. And that's another assist for a team that is putting on a clinic on how to share the ball. And I love the mentality that they've had. If a shot isn't there, they're not forcing it. They're moving it side to side until they finally get the one they want. Lopez passes to Bledsoe. Milwaukee, no good that time either. He's been anything but his usual self this quarter. It's actually been ugly to see. No other screen. George hacks it to a corner. Chance there to take the lead. Missing. Bucks have gone only two of seven from the field since the second quarter got underway. Corver against Beverly. Bucks right side. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. You know, he might want to think about deferring for a while. He's had his chances this quarter, but just not able to convert. Outside, Williams. Six to shoot. Rebounded by Corver. The Bucks shooting around 41% on the night. Or the three. Rebound, Kawhi Leonard. Well, it looks like he's cooled down a bit after hitting those two in the first quarter. Here's Beverly. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Outside, George. Goes up to the strike. George missing again. George has gone two for seven, struggling a bit. Clippers were so strong on the road last season. They led the league. Clark and field goal percentage were on the road. And actually, actually they scored more points away from Staples than in it. Especially down the stretch, Kevin. Oh. I mean, they finished the regular season with eight straight road wins to get home court advantage in the first round. Superb. On offense, here are the Clippers. A big stretch here going 10-2. Beverly with the ball. He's picked up by Lopez. Noah kicks to Leonard. Looks up a three. Los Angeles with another miss. And the Clippers with those eight road wins at the end, you mentioned that. You know, what's amazing about the Clippers on the road last year, guys, was the context. I mean, they had a bunch of back-to-back -back games and went 16-4 and four on the back end of back-to-backs. Eleven of those came on the road. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. How 
Korver a true laser. I mean, the most efficient catch-and-shoot jump shooter in the league, and, and maybe in league history. He tallied the second ever 50-50-90 season a year ago. Looking at his out there now for the Bucks. Lopez, he's checked in for Lopez. Honda Takumbo comes in for Johnny O'Brien. Wesley Matthews checked in for Chris Middleton. And George Hills subbed in for Eric Bledsoe. So it's the Bucks now. Kicks it to Antetokounmpo. Lopez dishes to Hill. Nice ball movement by Milwaukee. And it's Korver in the corner. Lopez a screen. The kick out to Hill. Shoots the three. That's good. And the Bucks lead by four. Corver now in his 13th season in the NBA. Last season was his best ever, especially shooting. Yeah, and he credits all of his improvement to the advanced off-season training regimen. Extremely dedicated. He moved his family to Santa Barbara to be closer to his trainer, and it's paid off. Just five on the clock. And it's Leonard again missing. I mean, look, no one guarding you. It's better to not pull up and try the lead. Outside Hill. Now the feed to Antetokounmpo. The kick out to Hill. Let's it go from deep. And a great assist by Antetokounmpo as that one goes in. Antetokounmpo's got three assists in the game. Clippers trail by seven. Jackson kicks to Smith. Sanders with a screen on Corber. Kumbo against Leonard. And there's the call on Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's his first foul. And really, these are some of the toughest calls an official has to make. Yeah, but in this case, I think he got it right. The defender was still moving there and never really had good legal guarding position. He wasn't set. Morris is checked in for the Clippers. Hill against Jackson. On the wing, George. Shot to stop the run. Rebounded by the Bucks. Lopez has got his third rebound tonight. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. And guys, you know that rebounding is a huge part, a huge component of winning games. It's not a glamorous bet. But it's necessary if you're going to be a winning team. So yeah, every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. And that's because the ball is looking for the best shot. And it's really paid off for them during the run. Jackson against Hill. On the wing, Jordan pulls it from 20. Nice touch on the bank shot. George has got seven points. On offense here, the Bucks. They've outscored him ten points to two during this run. Adekumbo setting the pick for Hill. He dishes it to Corver. Good, the assist goes to Hill. Corver's got the lead up to 11 now for the Bucks. This looks like a pregame shoot around with all the threes they're allowing. I don't know. There might be more defense in the warm-ups. Right now, these are just shooting game shots. Morris passes to Sanders. Jackson dishes to George. Just five to shoot. Fades back. And all around in that time before dropping in. Nine points in the game so far. And started hot, and he's only gotten harder. And Jason Kidd has seen a lot of things in his first few years of coaching. Already changed teams once and had some personnel issues, but you cannot deny that he knows how to get the most out of his team. Smith kicks to Jackson. Down low. Morris with the ball. Now guarded by Andagumbo. And the shot is good. Perfect screen there. Set him up with a terrific look. Yeah, I like the fact that the setup was good. The screen was solid. But you also have to look at the fact the defender 
didn't do his job as well as he could have. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks ended last season 41 up and 41 down. A perfect 500 mark, and they were the epitome, Clark, of average at the end of the season, and, and as you can see, even during. It. Well, they're a young team, but at 1 point, 17 and 17, also had an 11-11 record against the East and 6 and 6 against the West. Here's Hill. Eight points his last outing. Outside Corver. He kicks to Antetokounmpo. He feeds it to Lopez. Lopez is screen on Smith. Matthews goes in. And let's use this break to check out a group of the NBA's best defenders recently. The shooting guards averaging the most steals per game for the past month. In the third spot, Kyle Korver. Lewis Williams fourth. And both the hand speed and general quickness of the players on that list are outstanding. Those are the qualities you need to be an effective perimeter defender. And that shooting guard is where you'll usually find the team's best defender. And this group illustrates that clearly and perfectly. These fellas play the best on-ball D that you'll see in the NBA. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. Shooting 100% in the quarter. They've, um, they've made them all taking full advantage at the line. <laughs> I tell you what, nice job making the most of their opportunity. A minute 42 left to play in the first half. Jackson passes to George. Back to Jackson. Screen by Sanders. Jackson with it. Matthews covering. Offensive rebound. Sanders. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Yeah, good job to take him right at the game. Yeah, really left him no choice there, Greg. He had to foul and keep him from converting the easy bucket. And some stats here, guys. The scoring breakdown for the Bucks. They definitely had a hot hand from three-point range. Always nice to get off to a good start. The other thing they've had going for them tonight is their passing. I mean, doing a nice job. Plenty of their points early on coming off assists. You know, you work hard all season, Greg, to try and get into the playoffs, then get a favorable first-round matchup. How about the Clippers last year? Followed those steps. The reward, reward with the first-round matchup against the defending champions of the league, the San Antonio Spurs. And not only were the Spurs the defending champions, but they came in playing terrific basketball down the stretch, which is kind of what they are noted for. And, and the Clippers, though, did well, even though that was the case. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this league. 58 seconds left here in the second. It is now to George. A three. Can't get it to go. Now the Bucks take it the other way. Boy, I tell you, it was a tough road for the Clippers in the playoffs. They get by the Spurs in round one in a seven-game emotional series and immediately have to go up against the Rockets in round two. And he gets it to go. They're hovering around 50% for the game in three-pointers. That's pretty good. But they've really elevated here in the second quarter. 30 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Sanders dishes to Morris. Lopez with the steal. Outside, out of the Kumbo. The pass to Hill. There's the three. And so we wrap up the first half. Bucks ahead, ending the second quarter on a 20 to 7 run. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Kevin, we have Brooke Lopez with us. What's the attitude you have as a team right now? Oh, it's so exciting. You know, it's really thrilling to come out with such a great group of guys every night, you know, and uh, play basketball. You know, it's just it's a lot of fun. Brooke, thank you very much. Kevin, over to you. All right, Doris, thank you. And we'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter.
the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back, folks. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. We're going to break down the first half action for you. Kyle Korver having an outstanding game. He ended up with 15 points, three rebounds, and one assist. It's really great to see him back to what appears to be top form coming off the injury. There's a sense of reassurance that he's healthy after the first two quarters back. Shaq, let's get your take on Milwaukee. The area where they impressed me the most has been on the boards. When the shot's gone up, everybody goes for it. Just a matter of maintaining that energy, playing with that same kind of aggression in the final two quarters. Kenny, what's your take on the Clippers? Well, the perimeter D is just too loose. I mean, there's no excuse for letting the team rain that many threes on you. And at that high a percentage, guys aren't fighting through screens. They're not staying with their shooters. They're not helping out. Just bad basketball on a defensive end. They've got to tighten it up on a high level in the second half. All right, that is going to wrap up our halftime report as it's just about time for the start of the third quarter. 